Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my top 15 favorite XL or extra large folding knives. This list is not based on, you know, oh, it's great for the bush, or it's great for uh, batoning uh, logs. And... No, no, don't care about any of that. Uh, just from an enthusiast perspective, me just enjoying large folding knives for one reason or another, some of it is based on some carry, and some of it's just based on, you know, my general interest in it. Some people don't like these screen recorded epi episodes and that's perfectly fine. Just know that I have physically reviewed every single knife on this list. So if you don't like this and you wanna see me handle the knife, all you have to do is type in Metal Complex, the name of the knife, and then you can get a full comprehensive review, which is gonna be better than anything you'd find in a top 10 list anyway. Um, what is XL? What is that? Is that like, is there like a specific definition there must be, right? No, there isn't. Ask a million different people, you're going to get a million different answers. For the uh, sake of, you know, consistency in this video, and just because it's my list and I have my own preferences, it's anything over nine inches. But if you travel real quick right down into the comments section, you're going to get a, a whole bunch of billies down there telling you that it's 15 inches or more because they have XL hands and they need you to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the most cliche comments down there in the comment section, so feel free to have a gander. Anyways, um, yeah, that's all this list is. Some of these knives are available, and some of them aren't. Uh, these lists don't always consist of knives that are available. If they're available, they're going to be listed down below, right? Some of these are stupid expensive, too. It's just after everything that I've handled, I just there's certain really large knives that I like that cost a lot of money, and other XL knives that I like that don't cost quite as much. So that's what's going to be here. Also, the Cold Steel Espada Large and XL are not on this list. Yes, they are knives. Yes, they are large. I'm I'm not really interested in them. Sorry. <laughs> that's just the way it is. A Cold Steel that is on the list, however, we might as well start off here. Number 15. By the way, these are in order, so number one will be my absolute favorite. This is the Cold Steel SR1 in G10 and S35VN. This is a this one's the Tanto that also comes in a clip point blade. These guys are 9.375 inches overall. That's just reading off of Blade HQ's side. I think I measured it at something similar when I did the review. This is a massive, thick boy. Uh, 190 thousandths on the spine. It's got the Cold Steel Triad lock. Look, Cold Steel makes a lot of crazy stuff. They make a lot of practical stuff, right? This is kind of in between. It's crazy in terms of thickness and size, right? Um, but is this a knife that I would actually take out with if I was going to go camping like for a couple of weeks? Yeah, definitely. I know there's also, here's the, here's the second most cliche comment. If you really need that big of a knife, you really should be using a fixed blade. You should be using a fixed blade. Thanks for, um, thanks for letting us know. We've never heard that before. Nobody has ever said that before. It's the first time we've ever ever heard that. Thank God you were here to explain that to us. <laughs> Sometimes we just want the extra, you know, the extra capability of a more robust blade, but willing to sacrifice the maybe totally unnecessary extra durability that you would get in a fixed blade for the convenience of it being a folding item. Uh, that's why, right? Um, are these still overkill? I mean, the triad lock is overkill in its own way, right? We could argue this a million different directions for a million years. Not interested. Love this knife, though. Really, really cool. And you can still pick this up for 150 or for whatever reason, the Tanto version is like 190 or something like that. There's something, I'll, I'll leave links for this guy down below. There's also a light version that's ATR 13 MOV and injection mold plastic for like 60 bucks, which is, that's probably the more reasonable version for sure. Moving on here, absolutely, Cold Steel 4 Max. This thing is even more insane. This borders on the line of totally, like, actually totally unnecessary, right? This is where the, the fixed blade argument actually does come into play. Almost any scenario I could imagine where you might need this knife, you, you probably do actually just need a fixed blade because this thing is so big, the fact... <laughs> Uh, this thing is 10 inches, massively thick, big curvature of the handle, big tall blade, right? It's almost just as convenient to carry a fixed blade or just as inconvenient to carry a fixed blade as it is to carry this, but I still like it. Uh, that's the thing that, you know, I, I think, uh, it's worth reminding everybody 
uh, these knives don't have to make sense in any practical way for me to enjoy them. If you've watched my reviews, I do come at those, you know, from a practical sense. I try to imagine a scenario where I might use the knife, might carry it, who it's going to be good for, who it's going to... But listen, I'm a, ni I'm, I'm a knife guy, just like you guys. Sometimes we just like stuff that's ridiculous because it's ridiculous, right? Here's a great example, the Formax. Now, Cold Steel has a lot of other stuff that is ridiculous, but it's too ridiculous, right? It just doesn't appeal to me. The Formax, this one in particular, does. This guy was expensive. I think this was the U.S. version. There was also an Italian version. There, there, there was one that was like $2.99, and then there was one that was $3.99, and then the, now they have the Scout that's much less expensive. And it's a, You can check all that stuff out down in the description. Not every version is available, but I'll leave it down there. Um, yeah, big boy. Moving on here, absolutely. One that I do carry and I do find a lot more practical for an XL knife. This is the Microtech SOCOM Elite manual coming in at 9 inches. They also do an automatic version. I've talked about this knife into the ground on my channel. The only thing that I don't like about it is that it's tip-down carry. Tip-down's the best. Tip-down's the best. You you folks who carry tip-up, you don't, you don't know what you're doing. Whatever. <laughs> I don't like dip down. I just don't. But everything else about this knife is amazing, including the sound that it makes. Um, periodically, I've seen the automatic ones be available. The manual ones, for whatever reason, just haven't been available. I will link it so that no matter when you're watching it, uh, you might be able to drop down there and, and pick one up. I'm sure hoping that they'll come back in stock. These are U.S. made knives coming in at about $285. I do personally own this knife and uh, like I said, carry it, use it. I love it, definitely. Moving on here, another knife that I own and carry. This is the Microtech Combat Troodon. Um, this guy coming in at, I have all this stuff written down. There we go. Ne well, Blade HQ lists at 9.5 inches, which is silly because at least a quarter, probably almost half an inch of that is the glass breaker on the back. I'd say this guy's more like 9.1, maybe 9.2 inches overall. In any case, it's still huge. It's also an OTF, automatic knife, out the front automatic knife, which has its own cool factor. XL OTFs are just wonderful to me. I love the mat because they're so, the springs in there are so powerful, right? If you've never handled a true Microtech, right? Not talking about Raven Crest or freaking you know, Dragon Talon, whatever, it's all from China, right? No, not those. No, an actual U.S. Microtech automatic knife. I'm, I'm making so many people mad. I'm sure. How dare you? My Ravencrest tactical is a wonderful... Whatever, it, enjoy what you want. That's fine. But the, these, are the, these are the real ones, right? These, these are the knives that all of those other companies are, uh, uh, you know, riding the coattails of. That's what's happening, Right? Those, uh, the, the knockoffs, they're all, they're all Microtech knockoffs, right? Uh, that's, that's just, you know, that's just factually what's happening there. These guys fire, they, they, the feeling of action is much higher quality. The kick is better. This, all the parts are better. The materials are better. The tolerances are better, right? Which is why you pay so much money for them. But yeah, you can't convince everybody. I love this knife. I do carry it. Mine is a Hellhound. Uh, it was a gift from my wife. I'll be honest, I don't beat on it because it's really, really expensive and it just has some sentimental value, but I do love this thing and it doesn't carry too bad for being so huge. I live in Kansas, by the way. A lot of this stuff, a lot of people watching are going to go, you know, this is ultra expensive, it's huge, and it's an OTF, and it's dagger. This is, this is you know, illegal a million times over in my area. I, that's a bummer. I, I mean, honestly, I wish a lot of the kind of, you know, ridiculous laws were lifted, um, but... That's just, it, it is what it is. In Kansas, we can carry this stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I do enjoy carrying this thing, absolutely. And moving on here, another massive OTF, one that is doing its own thing and is not a uh, clone or copy or uh, a, a shoddy attempt at a Microtech. Um, this is the Guardian Tactical Recon 35. Much less expensive, um, but still U.S. made. I think these come in, what do these guys come in at? 350 370 bucks, something like that. The biggest double action OTF that I have ever held, and also the hardest firing. These guys come in at 9.75 inches overall. They're also incredibly smooth because of the bearings uh, that ride on the steel plate underneath the switch. The switch is also a better shape uh, versus Microtech and some of the other um, Benchmade OTFs and just OTFs in general. The shape is just better. 
Uh, it, it's made more for the human thumb. These things are ridiculous. They they kick like a shotgun. It's it's amazing. These things are awesome. Uh, really, really like these. Um, I, I, I place it a little bit higher than the Combat Troodon. Uh, Ale Max and Aircraft Aluminum on the scales. Moving on here, another OTF. Um, there's a few OTFs and a few regular folding knives in here. The Microtech Dirac Delta. Uh, this is a long, slender, or more slender OTF uh, than, like, you know, the Recon 40 or the Combat Troodon. And this, the firing switch is on the face. That's really, really cool. Not only does it feel a little bit more natural, your thumb is already in the right position when you reach for it in your pocket, if you think about how this is up against your leg, right? Um, and uh, you also get to enjoy real symmetry with the um, shape of the blade, the shape of the handle, right? The position of the firing switch. I love this thing. I sold my personal one to a patron, um, but... Uh, I'm not um, not saying that I won't ever pick one up again. If I ever find one in with bronze hardware and a bronze blade, yeah, I think I might pick that guy up again. These guys, these guys also have a reasonable price. The little guy is only like two eighty. This guy's like three fifty. Pretty good price for a Microtech. Uh, you you generally at this size, you generally see them go well over the four hundred dollar mark. But now the Direct Delta's got a great price. This is usually two hundred four P steel, which is an analog to M three ninety or twenty CV, and again aircraft aluminum. Uh, these guys are periodically available, so I'll link them down below if I can find them. Moving on here, yeah, the Strider uh, SMF. Unfortunately, nobody can get this hardly ever right now. Periodically, they do drop at places like Monkey Edge, uh, maybe some other places, right? We, we see them here and there. The Strider SMF, the large guy, not the SNG. This guy's 9.25 inches overall. For Hinderer fans, this is Strider's XM24. I love this thing. What I don't like is that they use one solid piece of G10 and then they sort of block. It's got a blocky attachment to the titanium side. I really wish that these were full tie or at least had a steel liner underneath the G10 scale like Kinder's do. But they don't, so whatever. I, the, you know, the, the, the main reason that I enjoy this is because it's got the Spyderco-esque opening hole and it has that amazing forward choil. But the blade, the, the blade to handle ratio is just bull. Uh, oh, oh, whatever. <laughs> I don't need to have a one to one ratio between the blade and the handle, right? Uh, that I can understand why some people are, you know, more attracted to a knife that has a one to one ratio or a great blade to handle ratio, right? I just don't care. I'd rather have, uh, you know, options ergonomically to move my hands around, right? Not that I'm necessarily getting into so many different situations with my knives that I need to be able to, you know, have a tactical advantage, right, in my grip. Um, but I do like it, and I just, I mean, honestly, I mean, so many of you are going to be able to agree with me. When you're just sitting there on the couch with your knife, and you're just, you know, you're just kind of going over it and holding it in different ways, right? It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of therapeutic. Um, so I like uh, I like the different uh, hand positions, right? It just it's it it makes it interesting, and uh, also makes deployment. I don't want to say dynamic. It's just interesting the different positions you can put your hands to deploy it, use it, whatever. I also appreciate the aesthetic. It's got a weird butt end. The pocket clip's not always in the best position, depending on if it's a performance series, right? Honestly, I don't know if performance series SMFs have the pocket clip mounted up in the corner. Strider uh, aficionados will be able to explain that down in the comment section. So feel free to. Fill in gaps. Anybody, fill in gaps wherever I'm wrong about stuff. I'm not, you know, my, my ego's not so big that I can't be corrected. <laughs> I expect to. I need to be corrected. Moving on here. Oh, boy, a lost gem. This is the Olamic Cutlery Classic Wayfarer, not the 247. This is the Classic Wayfarer. I actually did use to own this knife. Not mine. The, the one that was on the channel was not mine. It was actually my buddy Jeff's, and it was a sheep's foot variant. These guys are huge. Uh, where is it at? Yeah, nine and a quarter inches overall. I believe Olamic Cutlery will still make this knife, and they'll still make you a custom version of it. And their options and where they will... I, you're going to have to check with Olamic Cutlery. I haven't looked at their website for a while. Yeah, their options are nearly limitless. It's going to cost you a lot of money, but as far as a custom knife goes, their prices are pretty good. When I say pretty good for a custom knife, you're in the high hundreds. You're in the, you know, I, I want to say these guys probably start out at six, seven, eight hundred, right? It's a lot of money for a knife, but if we're talking about a true custom folding knife, no, it's it's not, right? Bah, people are going to argue either way. 
This thing is awesome. The flipper tab's awesome. The handle profile's awesome. Contoured scales, right? They generally use a super, well, they do. They use super high-end materials. This looks like uh, probably, uh, well, it's definitely a titanium bolster. Back then, people were like, you using GP's, GP Knives photo? Are you sure that's okay? Yeah, they're one of my, I've got an affiliate program through them. If you open up the description, one of the links will take you to GP Knives. It's, it's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, I love the blade shape. They've got a bun bunch of different uh, blade profiles, different, uh, uh, you know, how they do the bolsters, inlays, right? Um, I've seen them use like lightning strike carbon fiber and uh, Mokume and a bunch of different stuff, right? I just like the profile, I like the lines of this thing. Ergonomically, it's a dream. It is a big fat boy though. It's very thick and just the presence of it is so in your face. It's just, that's the way that it is. I'm not talking Medford Praetorian thick, but it is big. Definitely. I got a lot of enjoyment out of this thing. The flipping action is incredible. Anybody who's handled an, an Olamic cutlery, whether it's from the past or it's a modern one, is probably going to tell you the same thing. These are excellent. I miss them. I'm still not, there's still a part of me that wants to have a custom Wayfair Classic built for me. Uh, even though that this knife was much more a thing in like 2013, 2000, I think, somewhere around there. Yeah, still super cool. Moving on here, of course, of course. Uh, the, the Microtech, uh, Halo 6 is the generation they're on right now. This is a single action OTF, um, coming in at 10.55 inches overall, reading from the specs. This thing is huge. Uh, you push that button, that preloaded blade. Remember, this is not a double action OTF. It's a single action, which means that blade is under constant massive tension. Double action OTFs are under a little tiny bit of tension, uh, all the time but nowhere near what this is, right? Uh, anybody who's been on the inside of, of these, you know, understands what I'm talking about. Uh, you push that button and it's going to fire. Um, the, uh, the movie scenarios where you hold, where they hold an OTF up to a solid surface and push the button, it goes right through. That is for the most part BS. Uh, most of the time when you see that they're, they're using a double action, right? That's not what happens. The blade just derails, right? That's movie nonsense. This guy though, Ooh, there's not a lot. It, it doesn't come off the, um, it doesn't disengage from the thing that's keeping it attached to the spring. No, the spring just keeps pushing it. So I don't know. If you held it up to a watermelon, would it go through? I don't know. It would definitely puncture it. It would, the, the watermelon would need to go to the hospital. Let's put it that way. Uh, these are very expensive. They're incredibly rare. Um, I will link them down below. They arrive at dealers in small bursts, small batches. Uh, maybe if you're really looking for something like this, um, maybe you'll get your hands on one. I think they start at $700, <laughs> possibly more. I don't know. I haven't looked into the Halos for a while. I just remember handling, I handled a Hellhound a Halo 6 here um, this last year. So you can check that out if you want to. Moving on here. Yeah, the Medford Marauder. This thing is a gigantic very simple frame lock. It is stupid thick. This is the original Marauder, not the H-frame, not the MIDI. No. Quarter inch on the spine, three sixteenths on the titanium. The exact same dimensions that they use for the big boy Praetorian tie. Holy crap, this thing is freaking huge and thick. They come in a couple of different blade shapes, drop point and tanto. I think the original Marauder is discontinued, but I seem to see, you know, see them pop up on retailers. I know that you can get different variants of the Marauder right now. I will link it down below. This is a full US semi-custom knife. Not a production knife. No, it is a semi-custom knife. There are machine elements and hand elements in this knife. Uh, a lot of people are like, I don't like Medford because they use D2. They use D2 steel. They use CPM D2, not regular D2. They use CPM sometimes. But here lately, it's been S35VN, 3V, and S90V if you go to DLT trading. Honestly, yeah, if you're going to pick up a Medford, that's generally what you're going to see out there, right? Um, so, But if you do see a D21, it is CPM, Crucible Powder Metallurgy D2, which is a different, totally different beast than regular D2. It is not the same D2 that's on your Rat 1 or Rat 2, right? It's not the same thing. That's ingot form D2. Um, but anyways, yeah, just gigantic, thick, massive, overbuilt. Why would anyone want a massively overbuilt knife? Don't you guys know that the cutting geometry is, you know, not going to yield us a, a super pleasant slicing experience? Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I find a, an odd joy in a big, chunky sort of brick blade, right? A folding pry bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, I know that this is not going to make the vast majority of my cutting tasks 
uh, more, it's not going to be the most convenient object by a long shot. Don't care. I just like the, uh, I, I like the, the, the craziness, the insanity of the gigantic brick that it is, right? The other thing is, is that people who finally do handle a Medford knife all come to the same conclusion. This is why I hear people say this, right? They feel substantially more luxurious than they look. It's not apparent exactly what it is that you're paying so much money for until you get it in hand. Then they break in so smooth. Oh, God. It's like an old Cadillac on air ride. It's insane, right? Totally different experience than a less expensive knife. These are for some people and they are, for, they are not for others, right? This entire list is very polarizing. Medford seem to be substantially more polarizing, right? Uh whatever controversy surrounding whatever maker, whatever brand, okay, whatever. I'm just somebody who likes knives, right? So as far as the Marauder as the object that it is, a knife and my opinions on the knife and not Greg Medford, I like the Marauder. It's cool. Moving on here. Um, this is the uh, custom knife factory Satori OG, the first one, not the two, not the little guy. This is the big boy. How do you know that that's the big one and not the small one? Because I took this picture and that knife is actually right here in my hands. This thing is gigantic. I mean, listen, it's nine and a quarter inches overall, but that blade is so wide and so tall. The presence of this thing is insane. It's one of the only knives that when I flip it, there's recoil. When I, when I flip it, the whole thing bows to like compensate for the massive nose of this thing swinging up, right? Another knife that you can't get right now, Custom Knife Factory out of Russia. You can go check this knife out, the original listing on From Russia with Knives. The 2.0, the Satori 2.0 is a little guy. This is a collaboration with Peter Rosenti, by the way, which if you're familiar, familiar with Peter Rosenti, you'll know that everything he designs is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Spider Co. Python, Nirvana, right? There's a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Uh, if we're talking about custom knife factory, then the snafu, uh, the snafu 2.0. Yeah. Excellent. This thing is huge. It's insane. I love the blade. I just, I mean, as far as the knives on this list, it's, it's kind of more practical than some of them. I don't know. I also like it because it's a, um, an integral really, really cool that it's all one piece titanium on the uh, handle scales. It's just, um, just makes me really happy. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. Oh, by the way, Blade Steel's M390, um, titanium scales, we said that, and the original price on these, I believe, was $650. No idea what they go for now. Moving on here, yeah, the Microtech Scarab 2. Uh, this thing is gigantic, it is very thick, it is thicker than the, um, Combat Troodon, and these new ones are the same length. This guy also comes in at 9.5 inches overall, and a large, uh, well, at least a, maybe 0.3 inches is the glass breaker. So nine inches to the handle roughly. Frame is much wider. Firing switch is much wider. Blade stock thickness is a little bit thicker. It definitely fires harder. It's definitely more expensive too, right? Do you need to pay that much more money for, for an OTF that's the same size that fires harder? I don't know. I mean, at this territory, that's the kind of stuff that we pay more money for, right? Uh, do I feel like I'm getting a, you know, some kind of tactical advantage? Not really. I just, this is just cool. What do these come in at? 500 and between 500 and 550 bucks. It's really hard to find them right now. If I can find at least a listing that's sold, maybe if it's sold out, I'll, I'll put it down there in the description so you guys can click on it. Maybe it'll populate as soon as uh, if more come in, right? Newer ones um, have the track tech inserts. I don't think they have double springs. I think they did some prototypes or some early runs of this that have two springs like the old one. I think that the current Runs of these have just one extra robust spring, right? Whatever you think of that's what you think of it. It just, it is what it is. Blades, uh, the blade steel is generally M390. I'm sure we'll also see 204P and LMAX periodically, which is what you see with Microtech. I love the fact that there are no tri-wing screws on this guy or no um, proprietary screws. That's excellent. These are actually Torx screws. This is definitely, alongside the Recon 40, the most satisfying OTF in existence. Hands down this thing is epic moving on here out of course the hinder xm24 it's like an xm18 that you gave more steroids right because the xm18 is already a knife on steroids <laughs> are you sure that's an xm24 that's a harpoon spanto and they've never done that nice eye this is the brand new knife center exclusive xm24 harpoon spanto 
Holy crap. Yeah, I ordered one. It should be arriving very soon. Um, these are 20 CV now, uh, and they also have the triway pivot system, which is ridiculous that something like this is running on bearings, but it is. Yeah. And you can also switch out phosphor bronze or nylon. It's all in there. I love Hinder Knives. If you don't know, I love Hinder Knives. I have a playlist called Hinder Knives that's got like 60 videos in it. I'm a huge Hinder Knot. This is definitely one of my... I own this knife. I own... Um, you know, I'm about to own another one here, but I do own a, a Spanto XM24. Absolutely love it. Fit and finish on these guys is excellent. These come in at 600 bucks. It's pretty pricey. 175 up from the uh, three and a half inch variant. Is it worth the extra money? I mean, if you just really, really love big knives, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it's thick behind the edge. It's thick on the spine at 190 thousandths. Titanium's thicker, right? But you have the modular, the modularity, right? Pivot and all the screws and the pocket clip and the LBS and the, the filler tab and all that stuff. You can switch it all out. And parts are readily available at uh, sites like DLT Trading, which I'll link down below. So yeah, it's wonderful. Moving on here, of course, yeah, I have to, the Medford Praetorian Tie. This is like the granddaddy, ultra, mega, super overbuilt beast, right? Nine inches overall, even though I measured mine, my own personal Praetorian Tie, which was from a long time ago. You can check that video out if you want. I measured it at like 8.8 .8 or 8.9 inches. Maybe I was just off. Apparently, it's nine inches overall. That's really not the standout feature here. It is so big and so thick that it actually doesn't look like a nine inch knife. It looks like it's shorter than that. It's just the blade is so tall. The spine, just like the Marauder. Now, I'm not talking about the T. The T is a thinner one, right? The tie, the T-I, is the thick boy. Much more expensive. Not really sure why it's so much more expensive, but it is. And listen, it doesn't matter what I... I, I, I bought one, right? So, I mean, me complaining about it's trivial. But the spine is a quarter inch thick, and the titanium scales are 3 sixteenths. But because this thing is so tall, that's where the presence is, right? It's just a gigantic freak beast of an object. Just like the Marauder, you're going to see periodically CPMD2, S35VN, and 3V. I don't think I've ever seen DLT Trading do an S90V Praetorian tie, but they have done the Praetorian T and the Praetorian Genesis, which I will link right down below because you can definitely pick those up. What do these guys start at? $1,200. That's crazy. It is what it is, guys. It's been that way for a long time, and he's still selling them. So, uh, you know, uh, the T is less expensive. Those come in at, what, 600 700 bucks from DLT. Genesis, same thing, right? Get some enjoyment out of that, but if you really, really want the extra thickness, that's what you're going to have to pay. Unless you're willing to go on the secondary market and find one, I think you can actually get them for substantially less than uh, what they go for brand new on the secondary market. But yeah, it is what it is. Moving on here, the number one, the number one XL knife. In fact, one of the craziest knives that I've ever handled. Also one of the most expensive knives that I've ever handled. Um, this is the Sharp by Design Brian Nadeau, sharp by design, arch nemesis folding dagger. This thing combines everything that I love about large knives with kind of the fantasy ridiculous element, but then the execution of it is, it is so masterfully done. <laughs> the flipping action is unlike anything I've ever felt, thanks to their lipped, uh, it's not a traditional detent ball. It's a lip of steel that they use uh, underneath, and... The blade is pretty thick, 190 thousandths, and it is definitely four inches, perhaps a little bit longer. So for a dagger, which you would think would not create that whole, you know, kind of mass, like swinging feeling. No, actually, with this one, the combination of that blade and their detent system, the action is, it's nirvana. It is insane. Not the spider cone nirvana, like the definition, nirvana. <laughs> Incredible. Titanium scales. We have oftentimes micro texturing on the, these come in a million different forms they're not available right now they might be more available in the future you're probably going to pay base price you're going to pay one thousand five hundred dollars up to around four thousand depending on what it is you want right these are custom handmade knives in the united states they are masterfully done i've never handled something that was this precision this is to this day this from every angle that i can come at it, this is the most incredible the single most incredible knife i've ever handled there's even a milling pattern on the blade sometimes, which is definitely not something that I see. 
What's that uh, inlay material? This is the one that I handled. You can check this video out on my channel. That's Uranium Refier Noble. It glows. Um, pretty cool. I like that a lot. There's a lot of different material. This thing is just insane. It is... What do these come in at? Uh, 9.5 inches overall. Yeah, this knife ruined me. It did. It made me so much more critical of other things. Even considering this this guy was so expensive. One, this was this belonged to Alex from Alex's Knife Box. Subscribe to Alex's Knife Box. <laughs> he lent it to me. Um, yeah, it ruined a bunch of stuff for me. <laughs> Even though it came in this particular one at one thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Uh, yeah. Um, after handling this, I was like, oh my god, what have I been missing? It's insane. Of course, I can't acquire it. It's just a it's just a beautiful object that I got to handle. Yeah, my probably my favorite XL folding knife of all time. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. Hope you uh, enjoyed this. Hope you found it at least mildly entertaining. Like I said, many of these knives can actually be found in the description right down below this video, so feel free to check that out. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.